The A1 control has a built-in interlock that will prevent the saw from powering up if any of the control switches are not in the center or neutral position. This is to prevent a component such as a vise, blade, or arm from moving suddenly at startup. To power up the control, verify that power is on to the main disconnect and the main disconnect lever is in the on position. The red emergency stop button on the top of the control console is checked by twisting the button slightly while gently pulling upward. You can power up the control panel. Place all of the control switches on the control panel in the center or neutral position. Then move the spring-loaded start switch up to the start position. The power on light should now be illuminated. The spring-loaded start switch powers up the control when all the switches are in neutral center position. It is also used to start the automatic cutting sequence. Pressing the start switch down shuts off the saw. The auto switch has three positions, start at the top, neutral in the center, and feed on the bottom. Before changing the part length, move the auto switch down to the feed position. This moves the bar feed forward. Put the switch in neutral to power up the control. Put the switch in auto to prepare to run an automatic cutting sequence. The motor switch has three positions, on on top, neutral in the center, and off on the bottom. Place the switch to the on position to start the motor. The Sidewinder model will require pressing both green buttons at the same time to start the motor after placing the switch to the on position. The switch must be in neutral, center position, to power up the control. The clamp switch or vice switch has three positions, auto on top, neutral in the middle, and close on the bottom. Put the clamp in auto to have it open and close automatically when performing an automatic job. Place it in the neutral position, center position, to start the saw up. Move the switch to close to clamp for a manual cutting job. The arm switch has three positions. Auto, which controls the arm automatically in an automatic cutting sequence, neutral which will allow the arm to fall, and lift which will lift the arm up to the upper stop limit. The top row on the part counter shows the quantity of parts desired for an automatic sequence. The bottom row of numbers counts the quantity of parts cut of the desired quantity. To reset the upper row to change the part quantity for another job, Press the small buttons above each number to set each column to zero by pressing the button until the readout reaches zero or to the desired quantity. Clear the parts cut row, lower row of numbers, by pressing the larger button. Vice pressure is adjusted using the variable vice pressure or clamping force knob. When cutting solid materials, maximum vice pressure is recommended. When cutting thin wall material, place the material in the vise, and starting with a vise pressure very low, slowly increase the pressure until at the point before any deformation occurs. In general, it is desirable to have the maximum vise pressure holding the material while at the same time not damaging it with too much force. The cutting force knob controls how heavy the arm is when the blade is cutting. The higher the number, the heavier the blade will cut into the material. A heavy cut would be with the cutting force gauge adjusted to 7 or higher. The lower the number, the lighter the blade is. A light cut would be approximately 4.5 or 5 on the scale. The feed rate control regulates how fast the arm moves through free air and sets the maximum rate of travel. To slow down the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob clockwise. To speed up the traverse rate, turn the feed rate knob counterclockwise. Turning the feed rate knob all the way close to the right will prevent the arm from falling as long as there is air pressure to the saw. The saw's arm height can be adjusted to different heights by moving the height stop up or down.
do not inadvertently place the upper stop collar pin below the collar rather than through one of the holes drilled through the collar. If the upper arm height is set and the pin is removed and replaced incorrectly, the upper limit switch may be activated prematurely before the blade has cleared the material. This could cause damage to the blade, the material, or the saw. To make a manual cut, lift the arm by moving the arm switch down to the lift position. Adjust the arm height with the upper arm stop to have it close enough to the material so that the arm does not have too much free fall before starting the cut. The feed rate and cutting pressure should also be correctly set for the material to be cut. Place the material in the vise, making sure it is laying flat on the vise ways and in the cutting area. Move the clamp downwards to the closed position. Always check the vise pressure to determine that it is sufficient to hold the part, but not high enough to deform smaller sections or thinner walled material. Keep hands and arms away from the vise when operating the vise. For a trim cut, place the end of the material far enough past the blade to trim the material as needed. Once the material is securely clamped in the vise and the arm is set to the appropriate height, Start the motor by moving the motor switch up to the on position. The Sidewinder A1 saw has two green buttons that require two hands pressing the two buttons at the same time to start the motor after the motor switch has been turned on. To initiate the cut, put the arm switch in the center or neutral position. This will allow the arm to fall at the set feed rate and start the cut at the set cutting pressure. When the blade completes the cut, move the arm switch down to the lift position and move the motor switch to the off position. To remove the material from the closed vise, move the clamp switch to the center or neutral position. If multiple parts of the same length are required, the saw will be operated with an automatic cutting sequence in automatic mode. Place the material on the saw with longer lengths material properly supported and align it for either a trim cut or flush with the blade if no trim cut is required. To set the bar feed up for automatic operation, move the auto switch to the feed position. This will bring the shuttle, or bar feed as it is also known, forward, removing the pressure of the bar feed off of the shuttle stop. To set the bar feed up for automatic operation, Adjust the mechanical digital readout on the back of the bar feed for the desired length of the cuts needed. Move the part length past the desired length by .0015 inches or so and then back down to the desired part length. This removes the gear backlash for better accuracy. Once the part length has been set in the DRO at the rear of the saw, the part quantity has been entered into the parts counter the parts cut has been cleared, the automatic sequence is ready to be started. To start the automatic cutting sequence, move the auto switch back to auto so that the feed moves back to position to index the first part. With the saw in auto, auto switch on and other functions in auto, the spring-loaded start switch starts the automatic cutting sequence. The start switch is spring-loaded so it moves back to the center position after being pressed up to the start. Pressing the start switch down shuts off the saw. If a trim cut is required and the material is positioned past the blade the appropriate distance, start the trim cut sequence by putting the clamp in close. Put the auto switch in the top or auto position. This will move the shuttle back for the first part after the trim cut. Start the motor by moving the motor switch to the top or on position. Then press both green buttons at the same time. Move the arm switch to the center or neutral position. This will allow the arm to fall, cutting the trim part. When the arm completes the cut and starting from right to left, move all the switches up to the auto position. The auto switch was already positioned there. And press the spring-loaded start switch up. The arm will raise, the saw clamp will open, the feed clamp will close, the feed shuttle will move forward to the length set in the DRO, the saw clamp will close and the arm will begin to fall, cutting the first part. 
After the saw vise closes and the arm begins to fall, the feed will retract to position for the next part index. The emergency stop on the top of the control console shuts off all power to the control as well as the motor and blade. When the emergency stop on the top of the control console is pressed, the arm will fall and the control will be without power. Twist the spring-loaded emergency stop button to release it and restart the saw back up. The broken blade light illuminates when the blade breaks or the blade tension is reduced when changing blades. Clear by moving the spring-loaded power switch to the start position. The air bypass valve must be opened slightly to allow air flow through the system. If the screw valve is closed and air does not pass through, operations like arm descent will be jerky. The adjustable guide arm can be moved by loosening the locking knob on the back side of the Sidewinder model or by loosening the locking bolt on the front side of the H90 model. Then the guide arm is adjusted by pushing or pulling the guide arm to the desired position by hand and tightening the locking knob or bolt. In general, the guide arm should be as close as the material as possible without allowing the guide arm to make contact with it. For safety, always be sure the sliding blade guard that attaches to the adjustable guide arm is in place before operating the saw. Do not adjust the guide arm with the motor running. To change the blade speed, turn the band motor on and rotate the blade speed handle. To increase speed, turn the handle clockwise. To decrease speed, turn the handle counterclockwise. The blade must be running before changing blade speed. Never attempt to change blade speed if the motor is not running. If you try to change blade speed while the band motor is stopped, serious damage to the motor pulley will result. The power brush is used to help remove cutting chips from the blade. The brush should be adjusted so that the end of the wire just sweeps through the gullet between the teeth. If the brush is adjusted too close to the blade, it may cause premature dulling of the blade and will cause the wire brush to wear out quickly. The saw has manual blade tension unless the powered blade tension option is available for your saw and was ordered when your saw was purchased. To tension the blade, turn the T-handle down to within one eighth inch of the flat washer. Do not over tension the blade. For safety, never stand in front of the T-handle while turning it. If the material being cut is being cut into short pieces, a drop-in roller can be used to support the material when the material is no longer being supported by the roller on the feed table. Never attempt to run the saw in automatic with the drop-in roller in front of the feed vise, and never use it when cutting parts that are longer than 24 inches minus the width of the drop-in roller frame. Hold-down fixtures aid in the clamping of multiple pieces of material in a single row. Slip the hold-down fixture bracket over the vise plate extension on the fixed side of the vise until the fixture plate sits firmly on the row of parts and tighten the set screws to lock the fixture into position on the vise. There are two lockdown bolts at the pivot end of the saw. These bolts can be tightened when 90 degree cuts are going to be made. Tightening these bolts will provide more stability to the arm on a mitering pivot saw when making 90 degree cuts. They are loosened to allow the arm to swing to the desired angle when making a miter cut. In order to swing the arm over to make a miter cut, first be sure the arm is raised enough for the blade to clear the cut slot. If the 90 degree lockdown bolts are tightened, Loosen them before attempting to rotate the arm for a miter cut. Loosen the cam lock handle and rotate the arm until the pointer aligns with the desired angle on the protractor scale. Lock the cam lock lever down before cutting. If the cam lock lever is too tight to enable locking it down, or too loose to adequately lock, it can be adjusted using the Allen head bolt located in the cam lock lever mount. Always turn the motor off before moving the arm for a miter cut. 
check the adjustable guide arm location. The arm may require opening to clear the material or the raised cutting discharge plate. Also take note to loosen and slide the movable vertical support on the discharge plate. If this is not moved back and the arm is rotated, the vertical support will be cut along with the material.